What's up guys, Emerson from RaspberryTech.com and this is video 3 of our Raspberry Pi Scratch programming video series. In this video I'm going to show you guys how to use if and else controls. It's pretty awesome, it allows you to test conditions, if those conditions are true it'll do something, if they're not it'll do something else. So let's get started. I'm going to go under controls here on the top right and we're going to drag when green flag is clicked it allows us to start the program so whenever we click this green flag it'll start the program now also in controls we're going to drag the if else block here this is the if else control or if else statement depending on how you learned about this if you have prior experience with programming you know it as the if else statement and scratch is this if else uh, block that's in controls Basically, the way it works is um, whenever we, we click the green flag, it's going to jump to this if else statement or if else control here, and it's going to test. I'm sorry, it's going to test conditions. If those conditions are true, it's going to do whatever's under this if here, and if it's not true, it's going to do whatever's under this else. So let's give it some conditions to test. We're going to give it some operators. So we're going to go under operators here. It's a green one, and the, these are operators here, and I'm going to drag this less than and I'm going to put it right there. So basically the way it's going to work, it's going to test whether or not a number is less than another number here because this is the less than symbol. And we're going to give it a number to test. I'm going to say 10 here. I'm going to double click in that uh, box. I'm going to type in 10 and the other one I'm going to type in 5. So if 10 is less than 5 it'll do something. It's false. This condition is false so it should jump straight to the else and it's going to do whatever is in the else. Let's give it something to do. Let's give it some motion. So what, so if it's true, it's going to do motion. If it's false, it's going to do motion. So I want to drag this uh, glide to coordinates. And I'm going to drag it to this uh, if uh, portion here. So again, if it's true, it's going to jump to this part. And if it's false, it's going to jump to, to under the else here. So we're going to give it some coordinates. So if it's true, I want it to go up. I want the sprite. Let's move the sprite down to here. I want the sprite to travel up. And if it's false, I want the sprite to travel down. So th this glide code here will allow us to do it. So if you drag your cursor over the top of the sprite or anywhere in, in this uh, portion here, wherever you see the sprite, it'll it'll show you the Y and X coordinates. So I, I want it to go up. So I'm going to hold the cursor above the sprite. And I'm going to choose this negative 12, 161 coordinates. So X is negative 12. And... Uh, 161 is the Y. So if it's true, it's going to go up. And if it's false, it's going to go down. So the else is the down, basically. And uh, I'm going to give it a coordinates of, I'll say, 10 and uh, negative 133. So X10, Y is going to be negative 33. Negative 33. So let me drag this in the middle here. We know that uh, this condition is false. It's not true because 10 is not less than 5. 10 is greater than 5. So it's going to skip the, the section under the if and jump straight to the else because it's false. So once I hit the, the flag button here, once I click on it, it should go down instead of up. So I'm going to click it and it went down because we know that uh, 10 is less than 5. So the condition is false. Let's make the condition true. Let's make the sprite actually go up. So to make it true, we got to change this here. So I'm going to make this one a 5 and the, the other one a 10, right? So if 5 is less than 10, which it is, it's going to jump to this coordinate. It's negative 12, 161, which is up here somewhere. And it's going to bypass the else. So once I hit the green button here, or sorry, the green flag, it should go up instead of down. And it went up because the statement now is true. And that's how if else statements basically work. They test conditions. You give it to whatever conditions you want to test. And uh, if those conditions are true, you're going to give it some code to execute. It'll execute the code. In this case, it's a motion code. We want it to glide to a coordinates. I made it glide up because we want it up to be true and false to be uh, on the bottom. So I chose the coordinates and it went to that coordinates because it was true. And if it was false, it would have gone to the coordinates I gave it down here under the else. Let's just try it again. Let's make it false again. Let's make this uh, 9, right? And let's make this one 5. 
So now it's false again. 9 is not less than 5, so it's going to go down. So let's hit the green flag here. And as you can see, it went down. Now let's try something else. Let's try another operator. So let's click this and drag it and get rid of it. Let's just go to operators here. Let's try this equal then. This is another operator. Basically, if one number is equal to the other number, it's true. Otherwise, it's false. If they're not equal, then it's false. That's how this operator works. And um, let's give it something to test out again. Let's say 6 and 5, right? It's automatically going to be false because they're not equal. So it's going to do whatever is under the else because, remember, it's false. So it's going to jump straight to the else. If it was true, it would use this code here on top under the if. I'm sorry, under the if. If it's false, it'll jump to the else and do the code that's under the else. So once I hit the green button, it's false. It should, so it should glide down, sorry. And it's not gliding because I didn't move it back to its original place. So let's hit the green button again. And it's gliding down because it's false. Let's make it true. Let's uh, change this one to a 6. So now they're both equal. And it's true. And it should go up. So let's hit the green flag. And it went up because it's true now. That's how uh, if else basically works. You have a bunch of different operators you can use. Uh, and, or, not. Uh, greater than, less than, equal to. Uh, you can even add a, um, a variable into this here. So let's drag this out of here. And let's drag this, uh, let's say, let's, let's keep this equal symbol, I'm sorry. And let's create a variable. We can use the variables here. And we're going to make a variable. I'm going to click on make a variable. Let's call this one move, M-O-V-E. Let's hit OK. And we're going to say, uh, we're going to drag the move onto here. So if move, move is a, a, a value that we're testing now. It's a variable we created and it has a value. So right now, by default, it has a value of zero, right? So if move is equal to zero, which is true, because move right now has a value of zero, and that's the variable we created, then it's going to do whatever's under the if. Else, it's going to do whatever's under the else. So it should move up, because it is uh, true, and uh, move is equal to zero. So let's hit the green button, and it went up, because it's true. Now let's make uh, move equal to, right? And it's false, because move is equal to zero. By default, all variables are going to be set to zero. And uh, I'm going to hit the green button here and it should travel down because it's false now. All right, guys, so that's pretty much it for this video. If you guys like this video, please give me a like. If you want more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. I'm Rissim from RossmoreTech.com and thank you for watching.